This man takes a special kind of morning walk. Up Chicane Avenue, strolls through streets called the S's, along main streets known as straightaways, and around curves and bends identified only by the stain of oil and the skid of rubber. He is of a special breed of man. This is a record of 12 violent days of racing. One season of America's fast and vicious Trans Am Championship. Trans Am racing is North America's newest thrill sport, combining tough twisting Grand Prix style circuits with specially prepared production cars, Mustangs, Camaros, Firebirds, Cougars, and believe it or not, an all-American challenge. First time out, the red, white, and blue javelins from American Motors. People ask us sometimes why American Motors goes racing. And I guess the question is the same that the mountain climber answers the question. Why do you climb a mountain? You climb a mountain because it's there, and you go racing because it's a challenge. That's the why of American Motors' surprising entry into big-time racing. The who and the what are a patch quilt pattern of bold men pursuing their own dreams. The American Motors Racing Team, George Fulmer, master driver and U.S. road racing champ. Peter Rebson, international Grand Prix racer and winner of the Sports Car Club of America's Kimberly Cup, given to the most promising driver on the circuit. The opportunity was presented to me early uh, this year to drive for the American Motors people in the Trans-American Series. I had some uh, reservations initially, but uh, after investigating their program and the per personnel that they had lined up, uh, and my co-driver Peter Revson, I felt that the team would, would be strong and that uh, we would have some difficulties. We'd have some uh, pioneering to do to learn about the car and the track and get things uh, organized, but it was a great opportunity, I felt, for myself. And I know Peter Revson feels the same way, and that we were able to come up with something new and, and, and try to do a job that uh, a lot of people said we couldn't do. It is 10 a.m. at perhaps the most unique of any American race. The 12 hours of Sebring with its famed Le Mans start. The in-crowd, those in the know, laughed outright at American Motors coming here. In fact, some smirked, Javelin was DOA, dead on arrival. But off with a roar in good position is Cinderella herself, the Javelin from American Motors. Coming up, if the cars and drivers hold together, 12 hours of hell. And for the first time, the Javelin racing crew begins to function under fire. Sebring, Florida is no place for a debut. The track may be the toughest in the business. And yet it is here that American Motors has come to try its wings. The 12 hours of Sebring. First time out. First time in international competition. Sebring. A five and two tenths mile long drag strip with corners in it. Twenty shifts in a lap. Five hours in the sun. Six. And time takes its toll. Halfway home and racers are already dropping out. Eight hours. Twilight. And on into the black Florida night. Minutes now. Less than half of the cars are still running. 12 hours. The clock runs out. 
and right behind the leaders, the car they said didn't belong here. The Javelin race team is hot. War bonnet, Lime Rock, Mid-Ohio, and Javelin will roll up a respectable 16 points toward the championship, matching neck and neck the powerful, experienced Ford racing team. It is one of the oldest traditional racetracks in North America, Watkins Glen, New York. Javelin. Javelin. Javelin is the big word. The red, white, and blue is everywhere. And the smirks and the jeers are gone. The competition is concerned, worried. Cinderella has turned out to be a sharp knife on the end of a long stick. Mustang man Jerry Titus, for example. Well, I was amazed again at the javelins. They keep getting faster every race. I was noticing down the straightaway that I could hardly pull them with a toe. So that means they've got a lot of horsepower and uh, they'll be in there strong. They have good chauffeurs and they fight from beginning to end. So it's, it's a real good team effort. You just don't know. I'm gonna have my work cut out for me, I'm sure. Dan Gurney is fearless a pro as he is quick to show respect. Well, I'm not surprised. They've got very good people working on the car and the engines, and they've gone about it, uh, although they haven't made a lot of publicity about it, they've done it the right way, and uh, I think they should be commended. Camaro is Mark yeah, Donahue. Uh, the fellows from uh, the Javelin Group have uh, taken a uh, pretty big job on and uh, have come out of it pretty well. I know that uh, that motor is uh, something that's just been built, the car has just been built, you know, in the last year or so. And to take something like that and, and make a race car out of it in a short period of time is a, a pretty superhuman job. Catching them, Sunday after Sunday, one at a time. How good does it taste to Javelin pilot Pete Repson? Oh yeah, they're really very surprised that, that uh, an American Motors car could be as exciting as it is and uh, uh, be as fast as it is and actually compete uh, with a Mustang, say, on the, on, the, on the same basis. A two and one half hour contest over a fast and narrow 2.3 mile course. Around they go. But like every Trans Am, this one's a no-holds-barred battle. Car to car, man to man. Each man driving his own race with one thought in his head. Push, win. It's the name of the game. Hour upon hour, lap upon lap. Javelin hitting up to 150 miles an hour in the straights. On the skinny curves of Watkins Glen, it can happen any time. A wreck litters the track. The two javelins pour it on, trying to unlap the competition. It's nose to tail with Camaro and Mustang. Javelin pushes and pushes all the way around the day. As if to prove that Javelin racing team is in the Trans Am for keeps, a determined day on the race course turns into a long night in the classroom. Okay, watch this one now. Here we go. Well, that's a fast left-hander before the Yeah, there it is. Well, there's one thing. We're getting better in every race the little suspension developments that Ronnie and George and Peter and everybody get together on are helping us. A stone's throw from the ski slopes of Mont Tremblant is saint jovi Canada. And for the first time, American Motors and the Javelin Racing Team crosses the border into international competition. Halfway through the grueling Trans-American Championship season. And the red, white and blue crew is toughened up. And there's a mounting thirst for the number one slot. How do you feel about the year so far? 
Well, I think we've done a pretty good job considering we've been all new. But uh, now we've leveled off a little bit, and I'm looking forward to a more improvement, which will put us right up where we're able to the area, please. Great. Up to now, we've done a, a pretty good job of finishing second, but now we want to win, and that's, that's tougher. George Palmer says it another way. Racing, uh, to me, is, uh, is my whole life now. I, in the beginning, it was a... Uh, it was sort of a challenge and something I thought maybe I might like or want to do. I felt that it was, it gave me the opportunity to compete, which is something I enjoyed. I got started in a in similar way as to many people do, a very, very small, very limited amount of, of experience and uh, finding it uh, very difficult to get started. It's a, it's a very cruel sport and it, uh, there's so, much, so many heartbreaks, so many uh, difficult times. You anticipate a, a good a good weekend and winning a race and and in just an instant it's all over with and you're you're out and looking uh, and looking in. It's just a, it's a very difficult sport, and, but it's one that uh, uh, even with all the heartbreaks and all the disappointments that uh, one can have. Uh, you've you still come back for more. It, you, it gets in your blood. It's just something that uh, you. This is what you live for. This is what you want to do. And uh, no matter how cruel and how many uh, things you have to give up for it, you you come back for more and and enjoy it. The gears click one final time. Then the flag. Javelin has, for the fourth time, clawed its way to a beautifully executed second place. This time on foreign soil. Today in San Jovi, American Motors knocked the Ford Motor Company from second place in manufacturer's point standings. Please watch that bridge for your flags. Regardless of what they are, please acknowledge them. I know you're racing. Just keep it safe and keep things under control. Jim Kayser will be in the car with him and will be observing the formation, the rolling start. He will go around the course at 50 miles an hour. This is Bridgehampton. On the second day of summer, the Trans Am rolls again. And the Javelin twins turn on the juice as hot as she'll go. If you're good enough, and if your machine can take it, Bridgehampton offers curves cars try to take at well over 130 miles an hour. Cars which, by Trans Am rules, must be built up from a street-type sports sedan. How long can a car hold up under such torture? A man by the name of Ronnie Kaplan knows. As crew chief, he has guided the Cinderella's every inch of the way. Well, in the beginning of the year, since nobody had ever had any experience with the car, there were all these unanswered questions. So we had to get off on a development program that really wasn't a development program because of the time allotted to do this job. We had two months in which to build a car and go to our first race, and it just wasn't enough to build and develop at the same time. So we've had to do our development work at the racetracks. As a result, we've had a different machine for every race. As far as the safety aspect goes, we've managed this year to, to build into the car some super stopping and super handling. It would seem the Javelin racing team's engineering staff and pit crew are as good as the drivers. Because on this Sunday, George Palmer's Javelin moved up still another notch. Javelin again grabbed a flag for second place.
bebops, the kooks, the curious, the old, the young. They're all here at Meadowdale today. And where the crowd is drawn, so goes the press. And the fabulous Cinderella story of the Javelin Racing Team is the headline that clicks through the typewriters and screams across the wire services. Meadowdale swung today, and the beat was Javelin's. Pete Revson brought home the team's third second place flag. Riverside, king of the long curve. Riverside. Out here today sits through a scorcher. 110 degrees on the track. In here, it's 135 degrees. This man got Javelin in and out of a pit stop today in nine seconds flat. That's his job, chief mechanic. You can either win a race or lose a race uh, with pit work. It's got to be synchronized, practiced, perfected. If there's no wasted motion. Say it, a tire change. Tire changing is it's not something you plan. Most of the time, it's something that's uh, it's an emergency. You bust a tire, puncture it, and uh, maybe within five seconds, they have to be fully organized to uh, accept the car when it comes in and uh, change it and be on its way, say, within uh, 25 seconds. You practice your pit stops, even uh, in the garage area, he don't put it on it leisurely, or every time he puts in gas. Hours mean nothing to the mechanics because it's, it's in their blood. You're either a natural born racer or you're not. And uh, sometimes you work three, four days and you never quit. You never quit until a checkered flag drops. And you either win or you, you say, next time, I'll get it. For a thousand more miles, around the curves and through the bends, from Sebring in Florida to Kenton, Washington, 12 blistering races. And American Motors takes the record, the only manufacturer's entry to finish every race entered. Some newspaper man, a long time ago, called this venture the impossible dream. He was simply wrong. Uh, we've had, a, I think, a very good finishing record. We've had uh, good finishes in every race. We've never failed to finish at least one car in every race that we've started. We feel that uh, this effort is basically because of the, uh, the team spirit that we have. That's what it takes. It takes that blood or that breed of a man to, to be a successful racer, to have a successful team. Javelin, the Cinderella car, has turned the 1968 Trans-American Championship on its ear with this performance. And now that it's over, American Motors is a major competitor in the world of racing. Just how tough? Javelin did it at Trans Am. Javelin climbed the mountain. <laughs>